what we're we're going to talk tonight is about it's going to be a little different than our typical presentations. Tonight's presentation is is um, I'm going to be running the presentation. We don't have a, a set presenter to talk about it. Uh, last month, you if you were here last month, you remember I, I talked about the Florida Sterling um, framework for performance excellence, and and uh, tonight we're going to talk about recognizing Florida manufacturing. And one of the things, one of the, the, the ways that that's done is through something called the Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence Award. So you're gonna see, you're gonna see part of that. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna, you, I'm gonna take you to the, to parts of the, the award ceremony. You know, there's, there's video in there of the companies and you hear the companies talk about improvement and, and you know, how the, the, uh, the criteria, the Sterling criteria helped them out. But, but that's all during this month of October, which in Florida has been proclaimed by the governor as manufacturing month. And that happens every, every October is manufacturing month in Florida. There is uh, on a national level, uh, manufacturing day, but it's a single day and it's the first Friday in October. Uh, and that was created back in uh, 2012 by the National Association of Manufacturers, the NAM, which is based in Washington, DC. Um, but uh, but it's it's a it's now become a tradition for the last eight years. Uh, it's a tradition to for manufacturing related organizations to uh, uh, you know, to use to recognize manufacturers uh, in their in their areas. In in this case, it's in our state that we're looking at that. Um, much of the uh, of manu manufacturing day was it was initiated by the, the, as I told you, the NAM Association up in, in Washington um, to help really work with the in the educational community so that students of all ages from elementary through high school through college can become familiar with what manufacturing is, what manufacturing jobs are, how beneficial manufacturing is to our, to our economy and to, to the community and to individuals who are, who are employed in manufacturing. And uh, so it has a lot of focus on, on uh, students, um, but uh, it's, it's, it goes beyond that too. You know, there are a lot of different kinds of events. I have some slides here. That logo you see on the right hand of the screen is the, the logo for Manufacturing Month 2020. As I mentioned, it was, it was established in 2012 by the NAM. And in Florida, we, we proclaimed, the governor proclaims the entire month as Manufacturing Month. In Florida, the Florida Makes Network, which includes Florida Makes, it's the company I work for. It's a not-for-profit, um, and and uh, many organizations. Most of these are um, manufacturers associations, regional manufacturers association. You see, the SFMA, South Florida Manufacturers Association, covers our area here in the Miami Dade, uh, Broward, Palm Beach, and uh, and the four counties to the north of Palm Beach, are actually all the way up to uh, to Vero and out to uh, Okeechobee. Um, but these, these manufacturers associations, they have members and, and, uh, uh, and they're involved in this network, the Florida Makes Network. Uh, and, and there are all kinds of events that go on this month. Um, you know, uh, it, on October 1st is when the Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence, which we call the SMBE, the award ceremony, basically kicked off the month of Manufacturing Month. And during the month, there are all kinds of events that, uh, that, are, that are planned, some of them already happened, uh, but there's still many more for the rest of this month, actually. You know, there are plant tours. All the tours this year have been virtual, um, but that's not true every year before this. And the years before there were, there were plenty of, of uh, in-person kind of events, but of course this year is a little bit different as we all know. Uh, there are educational events, there are job fairs, you know, you've got not only the manufacturers associations involved, but Career Source. If anybody's familiar with Career Source, which is the workforce development boards in in the state, all around the, the state, that, that that's the unemployment. What we used to call the unemployment office when I was younger, uh, but uh, but uh, that's not what they call it anymore. Uh, but they do help people get uh, jobs and and training and development that they that they can use to help build careers. Um, there are all kinds of live re and recorded, and then of course those become on-demand uh, events. Uh, there's a website that you can check out. It's that right, you can see that there, www.madeinflorida.org slash MFG day. Um, and uh, it's a free access to anyone. You get in, you can just register and, and you're ready to go. Every time you come back there, you can, uh, 
uh, you can get in off of the, the initial registration. Again, like there's no cost to uh, uh, to any of that. Uh, what we're, what we're going to do, I'm going to take you to that website uh, just to show it to you and show you all the different things that are that are there. But then we're going to we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to get into the the uh, awards ceremony for the the SMBE awards. Uh, and the purpose of that uh, that award process is to help you know recognize manufacturers in Florida. To, to help the manufacturers, you know, develop and learn from a, in an organizational uh, way, you know, have, have organizational learning and organizational development, and to elevate not only those manufacturers that are in the process, but to elevate the entire manufacturing sector across the state to the to the community of non-manufacturers. Um, in Florida, there are about twenty over twenty thousand manufacturers. Sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. Florida is a, a, a pretty big state. We've got more manufacturers than most other, than, than uh, many other states. We probably have more manufacturers. In fact, we do have more manufacturers in Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach than you know the whole state of Colorado, for instance, and, and many other states that don't have as many manufacturers as we have in just a, a piece of the state. Uh, but of those 20,000 manufacturers, um, about 86% actually have uh, 20 employees or fewer. So you can see the a big, big chunk of small companies in Florida. Uh, there are very, very few, probably less than 5% that are, you know, over 500 company, 500 employees in this state. Uh, Florida is not really known as a corporate headquarters kind of a place, uh, but, uh, but there are a lot of small manufacturers in the, in the state. And, um, um, and, and, and it really is a very stabilizing, Florida manufacturing is a very stabilizing effect, has a very stabilizing effect on the economy. Um, in, for, for instance, for every dollar, there's, there are several studies that, uh, that uh, you know, show that for every dollar invested in the manufacturing in our, in our uh, state, in our communities, returns anywhere between a dollar and a half to three dollars to back to the community. So it's, you know, the, the multiplier effect of manufacturing is, uh, is, is very high uh, compared to others, which is usually one-to-one, -one, you know, in things like tourism and, and, uh, and other kinds of other sectors. Um, what, um, one of the things that, that uh, you know, we find, we find with manufacturing is that when, when the economy dips for any reason, manufacturing will dip as well, but doesn't dip as deep as tourism again. Uh, and it'll come back more quickly than tourism. And that, that's true. That happened, you know, back in 2001, following the 9-11 uh, terrorism attacks. Uh, it happened in the 2007, 8, 9, you know, Great Recession, uh, as some people are calling that. Um, same thing. Manufacturing took a dip, but came back more quickly. Uh, and I'll bet it's true. Uh, well, I, not just bet. I know that it's true even now during this, uh, the, the COVID pandemic. Um, the, it, it's still, you know, it still has taken a hit on manufacturing. Manufacturing hasn't come back to, to its, uh, uh, pre-COVID, uh, levels. Um, uh, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's much, much better off than other sectors in the economy. And, and tourism is the one that always comes to my mind because of, uh, you know, that, that, uh, hotels are being shut down. They're not full. Some are being closed, uh, you know. Disney World may be open, but it's reduced hours and there and reduced capacities and all that. So tourism is certainly not what what it was before uh, the COVID pandemic hit. Um, and manufacturing is is uh, still in pretty good in pretty good shape. You know, there are about three hundred and forty thousand employees in the manufacturing sector in Florida, um, and uh, and that did, has taken, like I say, has taken a dip. But uh, uh, but it's it's nearly back to uh, to where it was before COVID. Um, some manufacturing companies have shut down completely. Others are are reduced uh, reduced uh, operations, uh, and some are, are doing really really well. Um, you'll hear more about that when I show you some of the some of the uh, the, the clips coming from from the uh, the Sterling. Um, uh, the award ceremony that I'm going to show you. So for, as far as the awards are concerned, in two, for 2020, there were 140 nominations and that resulted in 10 finalists and, and of those 10, six winners. And you'll see, you'll be introduced to the finalists. You'll see some of their video um, and, the, and the winners. You'll see those in the, uh, in the ceremony. When you get to that, uh, that website, 
when you dial into that www.madeinflorida.org slash MFGDAY, this is what you see. Okay, so does everybody see the slide with the, yeah, you do, with the 2020 uh, logo, the manufacturing day logo. Um, so you see this, and uh, as you scroll down, you'll see all these little, they call these tiles. Each of these things is a tile, all these different events that are happening in, in it says manufacturing day, but it is for the entire month. Uh, you see there's some press releases. There's some, uh, the chancellor uh, from the D Department of uh, Education in Florida um, has a message here and so on. You keep scrolling, you'll, you'll get all kinds of, all kinds of different tiles. You see here a bunch of manufacturing plant tours, and some of these get repeated. You know, some of these are duplicated tiles that you'll see someplace else, but they take you to the same place. Some of these have already been done, but as you can see from these that I'm showing you right now, this one is October 22nd, so that one's in two days, and it's at 1.30 p.m., uh, October 23rd, October 23rd, October 26th, and so on. So you can take a look. It'll show you when, they're, when these are scheduled. Uh, like I said, you can go in and, and, uh, and take a look at these on your own uh, later. Um, but there, you know, there is a Made in Tampa Bay Expo in Bama. Bama is the association from the Bay Area, Tampa Bay Area. Um, you can see here's, a, here's the award ceremony again. Um, and, uh, and I'm just going to scroll down to here. So this is where the, here's the award ceremony tile again. And these plant tours that are, that are uh, located here are the, the 10 finalists that, uh, um, that were in the, in the process. Um, so let's go to the, um, so anyway, so that was the, the uh, madeinflorida.org slash MFG day website. Pretty interesting if when you get in there, there's, there's a tour I saw of, uh, of a uh, robotics um, workshop, uh, 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 an organization in Tampa that, that brings kids in and teaches them robotics at a basic level. Uh, or even not basic in some of the things that they do, but uh, but all of that's pretty interesting. So so here's the the award ceremony. I'm gonna I'm not gonna you're not gonna see the whole thing. I'm gonna cut out try to cut out some of the uh, uh, some of the less less significant type of of comments and and so on as I go through, so you don't get uh, bogged down by all that. But I want to show you some of the significant pieces. So here we go. If anybody has any questions, and by the way, when you when you get if you go to this this uh, platform where all these tiles are, it's very user friendly. You can move things around. You can expand size, which I'm going to do right now for you. You can uh, you know change the size of this. Uh, in this particular particular one with the for the award ceremony, there's an exhibit hall, so you can go in there. You can take a look. The, all the finalists have have booths in the exhibit hall. High performing Florida manufacturing companies in our state. Awards presented to the leading manufacturing companies. President of the Florida Sterling Council, Dion. Thank you, Zoraida. On this first day of Manufacturing Month, and on behalf of the Florida Sterling Council, I welcome everyone to our fourth annual Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence Award recognition. This award process is a terrific addition to the range of assessments and self-assessments offered by the Sterling Council, particularly since the manufacturing sector is an extremely important and stabilizing segment of the Florida economy. If manufacturing is strong, Florida is strong. Tonight, we are pleased to recognize you, high-performing manufacturing companies from across industries in the state of Florida. Congratulations, finalists. We look forward to congratulating the winners tonight. Your participation signifies the hard work and effort you have put into being successful now and into the future and in meeting the needs of your customers. The nationally recognized Sterling framework is an outstanding model for manufacturers, large or small, striving for enduring success. Award evaluations of your companies this year have proven that you have earned this recognition here tonight. Thanks for your leadership and your vision. I look forward to today's celebration with you and congratulating the winners later. Thank you. Now, let me introduce you to Phil Santonzi and Patty Gander, who will be hosting tonight's ceremony. Phil is the Director of Client Engagement Services at Florida Makes. 
He is a Governor Sterling Award lead judge, as well as a co-lead of the Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence Award process. Hattie Gander is a Florida Makes Business Advisor, the Executive Director of the Manufacturing and Supply Chain Alliance of Mid-Florida, and is co-lead of the Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence Award process. Welcome, Phil and Patty. Thank you, Dion. Well, Patty, this is going to be a great evening. What do you think? Seems like it's taken us forever to get to this point. I am excited so that we can finally talk and announce the winners of this SMBE award. Me too. I'm in South Florida tonight, Patty, uh, in Pembroke Pines. Where are you? I'm in Orlando, and I can see Mickey from where I'm standing. <laughs> okay, well, good. Well, on behalf of Florida Makes and the Florida Sterling Council Partners, I, too, want to welcome you to this event to recognize our Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence, the SMBE, awards finalists and winners, and to acknowledge the importance of manufacturing in Florida. Today, we honor 10 companies from a field of 140 nominations who have earned the right to be considered for their excellence in the manufacturing sector. That's what the SMBE evaluation and awards process is all about. First, recognizing high-performing Florida manufacturers. Second, providing opportunities for manufacturers to organizationally learn and develop. Evaluation feedback they receive from us is one of the ways we do this. Third, promote and elevate these manufacturers and the Florida manufacturing sector as a whole. Patty, do you have a few words about our team of examiners? Sure, thanks, Phil. So we had 50 examiners representing a diverse group of industries and backgrounds. They each contributed a significant number of hours of their time in preparation for the assessment, the actual assessment, travel to the site visits, scoring, and writing the assessment reports. Maybe more significantly, they put up with us, Phil. <laughs> this year's company evaluation results assessed performance against the criteria. Nominees competed against the evaluation criteria, not against each other. We visited many high-performing Florida manufacturers this year. Despite COVID-19 interruptions, the competition was robust. Congratulations to the 10 Florida manufacturers who have earned finalist status. We will meet them in a few minutes. Back to you, Patty. Thanks, Phil. It's now time to meet our 10 finalists. We've created a fun short video to introduce you to them. You'll hear what they do as you view scenes recorded at each of their facilities. Following that are photos from each company as they were presented their finalist plaque by a community leader in their area. Meet the 2020 Florida Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence Award finalists. Here we produce pharmaceutical, engineering, eye, and ophthalmologic products. We make sterile products to improve patients' lives. So we, we have about 250 different products across the globe that we provide patients for many different conditions. Some of them are over-the-counter eye drops, and then we have those uh, more high-tech suspensions and gels that patients need immediately after surgery. What we do here is we, get, we motivate a large team of people to work together to deliver those products. The SMBE has been a really exciting journey for us. It was a pretty intense process. But what it did is it helped us kind of get our ducks in a row with, what do you do here? So the engagement employees, um, building a great culture, putting in new equipment, which sustains the business for future growth. All those things coming together is part of this SMBE process. Carlisle Interconnect Technologies is mainly involved in aerospace but we also have other areas, military, medical. We're a key supplier in this industry. Here at the St. Augustine facility in Florida, we supply wire and cable assemblies. The products that are made here are products that make rockets fly, products that are used in satellites. It's products that are used in the aerospace industry for planes that you fly whenever you fly to visit family and friends. So anytime you are in a airplane, uh, most likely, uh, Carlisle is there with you. The Sterling process was very interesting to me because any time that you get the chance to bring in key business leaders from around Florida 
to review your process and audit and give you feedback uh, is great. We're all about understanding best practices and sharing what we do, uh, but we also want to hear what others are doing. Uh, because when we hear what others are doing, that gives us an opportunity to improve our process. So bringing in the, the SMBE auditors uh, to talk with us and, and take a look at our process is very rewarding. So Surex is a very small family-oriented company about 70 people that are working together to make nylon non-woven products. We're the uh, only company in the world that makes a non-woven out of nylon 6.6 polymer, which we use exclusively. One of our technologies is the only technology like it in the world. We have a lot of customers that have been very long-standing customers and will continue to be long-standing customers because they really can't get our material anywhere else. So our involvement with the Sterling process was uh, to start with nomination. That was a humbling experience in and of itself. But it was great to have a cross-functional group of people come in and take a look at who we are, what we do. And we're still looking forward to the feedback from that, to, to understand what the team saw on us that they liked and what the team saw on us where they saw opportunities for improvement. Just a, a great, great honor to be a part of this. It's great to be selected as a finalist. It would be great if we won. And, you know, to have that level of validation of some of the things you're doing going that well is just an awesome, awesome honor. So if I happen to be out in public and someone says, so, hey, what do you do for a living? I get to say, I make cookies. Well, I don't actually make the cookies. I do make the cookie mix. In making the cookie mix, I explained, you know, we bring in chocolate flour and sugar and baking powder and flavors and chocolate chips and marshmallows. And so we take those and we mix those up and we put them in those yummy pouches that you get to buy at the grocery store. When Compass Blending was nominated for the Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence process, it really was refreshing because it gave us the opportunity to really audit ourselves and see where we are and are we really doing the processes we say we're doing. So for, for Compass Blending in the SMBE process, I really felt like it gave us the opportunity to continue to do better and highlight and spotlight some areas that we feel we can definitely make strides and improve. The chemicals that we make here at the site go into a wide array of final products. So we make the amines out of an alcohol and ammonia, and we sell that to another customer who makes final products out of that. And one of those products is a vitamin B that goes into baby formula, fracking, and chicken feed. That's one of our major products that go, our customers make. Uh, our products also go into fuel additives, and it goes into so many different array of different items. I mean, Dawn, or dish detergent we use. Our chemicals we make here are basic building blocks for all kinds of additional chemicals that you can use. The Sterling Manufacturer Business Excellence process has been a very rewarding thing for the site. We, it really challenges you because there's so many great areas of focus from the Sterling process of all different aspects of your business that it really makes you think hard about are you doing the best you can and can you improve in different areas. And that, that was really rewarding going through that interview type process, but also when the process was over, all the recommendations we got from the process, from the Sterling Manufacturing Business Excellence process that recommend, you know, you should, here's an area that you maybe make some improvements in, here's an area that you're really good at, maybe want to share with other companies. So that was very, very beneficial and I think it's made us a lot better company in the long run. I really, I really do. manufacture hurricane and security shutters that help protect customers from both uh, storms and intruders. So we got involved in the Sterling Manufacturers Business of Excellence for a number of different reasons, uh, but we really needed some additional help with the company and it really was a godsend for them to send people here, evaluate the company, help see our strengths and opportunities. Uh, it was really an eye-opener for us. It was a lot of hard work, but the company is so much easier to manage now that we have more processes in place and we've got our sights set on even bigger and better things now because of it.
But what we do here at Fort Walton Machining is we are building product that goes into military hardware aircraft. We're building freedom. It's always good to have outside eyes looking at your processes, your procedures, your culture, uh, because we do it every day, we live it every day. Sometimes you, you don't think about it. So having a fresh set of eyes, especially with the great people of Florida Medics and the Sterling Board, um, you know, they just bring a wealth of knowledge uh, to the table. And, you know, they make you think about things that, man, I didn't really think of that the first time. Or, or you know, geez, that's something we should have been doing the whole time. That's a best practice that we didn't really know existed or really was applicable to us. So the whole process has been um, very, very uh, eye-opening, um, but it's been fun as well. We make equipment that services the airport and the airline industry, so what we're doing is providing equipment that allows people to travel. In terms of loading bags onto the airplane, or moving the airplanes away from the gates, or more importantly even is de-icing the aircraft to make sure that they fly safe in winter weather. We pursued the Sterling Business Manufacturing Award primarily because we've been on a long journey. So really our focus on improving our business started, I would say, probably in earnest in 2005. So there's been a long committed effort to this, and it also affects how people feel about working here because they can see the positive execution and the changes that we're making to make the business a better place to work. Once you do all that, you put all that effort into it, it, improving your business, applying for the award and going through that process is a, just a positive feedback for the, all the energy that went into it and the people that committed their time and, and efforts to make all those improvements happen. So this is where we're a little bit more unique in the manufacturing world. I'm never gonna build something that's mass produced. We take some of the most complex products that anyone could ever develop from a thought to a tangible product in the field operating on a day-to-day -day basis that actually affects the way we fight the war every day, the war on terrorism. Every day, someone is operating on a network or product that we put together right here in this building. The assessors, through multiple other assessments, were able to identify areas that we could easily improve in. When they shared that with us, it was a second set of eyes. And it was through people that don't do our type of work. So it, it was really a great way to see how other people interpret what we do, where they think we could improve, and just those extra ideas made us immediately better. Amicel is a medication adherence company overall. The majority of our business is in the acute care setting for hospitals. Go to a hospital, it's very likely that you'll see Amicel cabinets and equipment used in that setting. For the non-acute setting, so think nursing homes, skilled nursing facilities, correctional facilities, that's where you'll see our products. So that's compliance cards, and sometimes they're referred to as bingo cards, and our customers, the pharmacists and the pharmacies, will use those to distribute medications to their patients. The biggest impact to the Sterling process has really been about some of the feedback. Although we were highlighted as having a very effective leadership and communication program, one of the things that we really didn't have visibility to was that feedback that we get potentially could be filtered. So Sterling gave us that feedback. We're gonna take that as we work through some of our employee engagement activities for the next year. Now for the announcement of winners. Each manufacturer was assessed by a team, judged and selected as a winner solely based on the criteria for performance excellence. In past years, winners were selected within a category based on size. This year, they were selected by their performance to the overall criteria. This approach acknowledges that excellence is not based on the size of the company, but rather on organizational performance defined by the criteria. This process recognizes manufacturers, both finalists and winners, working to achieve excellence regardless of size. The award levels, bronze, <laughs> silver, and gold, are based solely on the criteria. As I noted, our new approach to evaluation could yield multiple winners or no winners at each level. Let's find out. 
Companies named at each level are in no particular order. Patty, do you want to get us started? Sure. Thanks, Phil. For the Bronze Award... Bausch and Lomb. And just a note about these um, the trophies. These, these That's actually just part of the trophy, but they're actually made at a manufacturer here in Florida, uh, specially designed by them and uh, and produced by them. So it's pretty, it was pretty neat. It's all, all Florida manufactured. Tampa, let's watch a video message from them. My name is Bob Fulop, the Director of Site Operations at the Bausch & Lomb Tampa Manufacturing Facility. I would like to say thank you from all the Bausch & Lomb employees and leaders. We are extremely honored and humbled by this, this award from the Sterling Manufacturing team um, at Bausch & Lohm, we are truly one team. We've stuck together during the pandemic to ensure uninterrupted supply of our products worldwide. Um, again, thank you very much, and we humbly accept this award. An additional bronze award. Interconnect Technologies, St. Augustine. Here's their video message. Thank you. On behalf of the great employees of Carlisle Interconnect Technologies, I accept this award that acknowledges their great efforts to always satisfy our customers and to continuously improve our manufacturing operations. We are honored to be recognized by the Florida Sterling Council and Florida Makes. Thank you. Also for the bronze award, Advanced Fabrics, Cantonment, and their video message. It's an honor to be here today and to be recognized as one of Florida's top manufacturing businesses. We began this journey about five years ago when, as an organization, we created a vision of what we really wanted Cerex to become. We collectively weren't satisfied with our performance in a variety of critical areas, including safety, operating efficiency, quality, and sales growth. As we took a hard look at ourselves, we realized that we needed to engage everyone in the organization to be successful. New leaders created opportunities for building real teamwork based on trust, respect, and support. Over time, as leaders continued to show up as part of the team and to enable the team to take actions, teams became confident in their capabilities and proud of their successes we realized that third-party assessments could help us see ourselves more clearly. We started with safety and learned a lot about ourselves in those first third-party assessments. Today, over 40% of our employees are on our SAFE team. We begin asking customers for feedback on our products, service, and reliability. A quality team was formed to follow up on these complaints and determine root causes for our customers. This led to a reduction in our customer complaints. We recognized over the years as highly experienced employees retired that our knowledge and skill base was deteriorating. Leadership saw opportunities to create a more focused work structure and implemented a pay for skills based reward system that encourages employees to grow their capabilities and to contribute more. Teams became more involved with member training to ensure they were satisfied a new teammate could safely do their jobs and do them well. Today, teams are involved with all aspects of our business. I personally believe this is what sets CRX apart. Empowered teams, engaged employees, and enabling leadership. And let me tell you what the results have been. In 2017, we had a recordable incident rate of 8.1. We've just now completed our 15th consecutive month without any injuries and have a long-term goal now of 1 million safe work hours. That's a seven-year journey. Our customers routinely score our performance at a 4.7 out of a possible five. Customer complaints have been reduced by more than $75,000 per year. Sales grew 5% in 2017. 12% in 2018, and this year are on track for another 11% increase. 
operating efficiency is increased over 500 basis points in 2019 and are up an additional 250 basis points in 2020. We set a record in total yields and sustained this for over 12 consecutive months. This amazing thing and all of this improvements didn't happen because of shiny new equipment or new automation or processes. The difference was the people. As a member of the CRX team, I am proud to have the honor and privilege to represent all of our organization in accepting this award. We would like to thank Florida Makes, the Sterling Council, and the SMBE assessment team for their support and input on ways we can make CRX even better. I encourage other Florida manufacturing companies to take advantage of the Sterling Award process and benefit from the insight and best practices that are shared. Thank you. And the last bronze award. Fort Walton Machining of Fort Walton Beach. And here's their message. Thank you to Florida Makes and the Sterling Council for this award. On behalf of Fort Walton Machining and all of our fabulous employees, we accept this award and thank everybody who voted for us. We have no silver awards this year. However, for the final award at the gold level, Eastman Chemical of Pace and their video message. I'm Wayne Henson, the site manager for Eastman Pace Operations. I'm very honored to be accepting this award from the Sterling Manufacturer Business Excellence process in recognition for the performance of our site here at Pace. Uh, this award really exemplifies the efforts that all of our employees and leadership and our contractors put in place here at the site in order to ensure a very trusting environment, a respectful environment, to ensure we exceed our customers' expectations. And also it's about how we, as a group, you know, work together in a common team to a, to a goal. Uh, we do our best at that, and we also uh, want to recognize the site for how they institutionalize all those changes into processes that can maintain themselves over the long term. So this is definitely an honor for our site and recognizing the efforts we put forth over the many years. I want to also thank Florida Makes and the Florida Sterling Council for the work that they do. I know they work tirelessly to support the manufacturing of Florida and to make sure our manufacturers here are world class and can be competitive going forward. I can't say enough about that. It's, it's, a, it's a stellar job that they do. I also want to thank Florida Makes and the Sterling Council for all the work they did for us in the last two years. We've been in the process for two years now and as a result of the process, just the questions and interviews we challenge what we do, we get to look, step back and look how we do things and, and realize that we have improvement in all different areas that we can make. And then this process does that, it allows us to identify those improvement opportunities. Plus, it's a great job that was done in the process of looking for opportunities and pointing out opportunities to us in areas that we want, may want to improve. So not only is it a process for what we're doing now, it's, it's a very good process for helping us improve the years going forward to get better and better and better. I really thank the uh, Florida Makes and the Florida Sterling Council for that. Uh, once again, we're very honored, and you can be assured that we will be supporting and working with the Sterling Manufacturer Business Excellence Organization going forward and making sure that we continue to improve and work towards perfection. And we will also work with other organizations to kind of share our learnings and our best practices to ensure that they become the best they can be as well. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you to all our winners for your participation in the SMBE 2020 process. What kind, what kind of comments or what kind of questions might you have about all this? Why was there no silver um, winner? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, and a few other people asked me that over in the last few weeks. Um, the criteria that we use, the, the companies are not competing against each other. So they have to reach a certain level of performance, a certain score in order to, 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 uh, uh, you know, to win the bronze, or another level for the silver, and then another level for the gold. And so the way that the, the companies, they were high performing companies, they just didn't reach that level that was required for silver. And the one that got gold was, was got a score that was higher than the performance level expected for a silver winner. Does that, does that make sense? 
and and you may have heard me say that during the uh, some of the presentation that uh, you know the, the the competition is against the criteria. It's against the standards of of uh, high performance as opposed to you know just scoring higher than the company next to you in the in your group. And so it, was, it has to do just with really what level of performance did you achieve? And so those 10 companies, the overall 10, were in a level of performance above the other 130. And then within those 10, you know, as we, as we further refine their performance levels, then we got the four bronze winners, no silver, and one gold. Anything else? Okay, well, we'll uh, just for your information, by the way, the, the, uh, the 2021 SMBE awards cycle begins next month. And we're, you know, we collect nominations from anyone, anyone uh, about any manufacturer. The eligibility is for any manufacturer, manufacturing facility within the state, regardless of size. And then those, those uh, finalists, uh, I think the smallest the smallest uh, finalist had, uh, I think it was 30 or 40 employees. And that was the Compass Blending, the company that, that did the, was in food processing and it produced, uh, the way she put it, she produced you know, the cookie mixes and things like that. They do a lot more than just cookie mix. Uh, but, um, but that was a small company. I think that was the smallest uh, company that was in the finalist. And the largest was, um, I think, uh, I think it was Eastman. Eastman, the last, the, the gold winner was the largest company in that group, but they were all throughout. And, uh, and the companies that were finalists that didn't win were all throughout as well. We had large companies there. We had small companies there. Um, you know, it has nothing to do with the size of the company. I think you heard us talk about that also. Uh, it's really about how, what kind of performance you have relative to the, the criteria, which is all based on the Sterling criteria. Steve, I see, is that your hand up? This has categories of competition. And it sounds like yours are just based on standards regardless of the company size, is that true? Wait, say that again? I said the Baldrige and the Sterling, I think have categories of companies. And it seems like yours are more, just one category of manufacturers and it's all based on the same standards, is that true? Uh, yes, the uh, the Baldridge has um, uh, they they break it. They they've got uh, business. They've got not for profit. They have healthcare. They have education, and within those, there's large and small. And with Sterling, Sterling doesn't break them out into all the various sectors. It's just the Sterling one you know one uh, one set of criteria for all organizations, and. Um, and, and you, you know, depending on the type of organization within there, you may be a large public, you may be a large healthcare or a small uh, healthcare, a small public, um, and uh, and so that's yes, so that's the way the the Sterling and the Baldridge operate. This was just strictly manufacturing, and uh, and and it didn't matter how big you were, how big you are, uh, the the criteria applies. Now now the biggest difference though is that. Um, the, the way the criteria apply, you know, a small company, if you have a 10 person company, let's say, and you've got a really, really high performing process that works for that 10 person company. Well, that high, high performing process for a 10 person company, as soon as it moves over to a hundred person company, it's not high performing anymore, probably. Uh, there's got to be more. So, so even using the same criteria, you know, the small company would be high performing in that particular area the larger company would not be as high performing. And, and so that's, you know, that's the way the criteria applied. And that all comes from understanding the context of the organization. For those of you who were here last month, I talked about the organizational profile of a company, which really looks at what are the influences and what are the pressures on a company to, to uh, uh, you know, and, and those are the things that really define the kinds of processes and systems that they should have in place in order to be high performing. Does that answer your question, Steve? Yeah, I have like one follow-up. What about how do you go ahead? Examiners, like you have Sterling examiners. So you, I guess there's Sterling and Florida makes. There are, are some examiners on both sides of that. How does that, I mean, if someone here had an interest in being uh, in that pool, what is it, how do you do that? 
Okay. Uh, I'll answer that, that question second. First, the, the first part of it that you talked about, our, the examiner team, we, have, uh, we had about 63, I think it was, or 62 people in the examiner team this year. Um, and that was, and, and primarily it's, it's that larger group because, because we're looking at the entire state of Florida, you know, those, those companies stretched from, from, you know, Pensacola down to South Florida and, you know, and, you know, Tampa to Jacksonville, they were, they, or St. Augustine, they're all over the place. And so we tried to just minimize the travel in the in last year, you know, it was important because we did in-person uh, site visits. Um, and, uh, and to minimize the travel, we have, in, uh, we have examiners all over. Now the examiners are, well, of course the Florida makes, you know, employees, the business advisors, they're not volunteer, but they're examiners, uh, you know, in, in, as long as there's not a conflict of interest. We also had examiners who were Sterling trained examiners and did not uh, get assigned to a Sterling award or the Sterling challenge award, you know, so come, they come from the same pool of people who were trained every year in the Sterling criteria and the Sterling processes. And then we had another group of people who were, who are uh, what I call the manufacturing community people. Uh, they're not Sterling trained, not, not formally, they're trained by having experience in this process and, and, you know, and, and, you know, trained by me essentially in Patty. Patty Gander was the, the other lady on the, that you saw on the screen there. She's a kind of a co-lead. Uh, but that group, of manu that group of manufacturing community people come from uh, colleges, state colleges that are involved in educate, manufacturing education. They come from career source. I mentioned career source earlier. Uh, they come from economic development organizations. They come from um, uh, vendors, actually, vendors to manufacturers. They've been involved in, man, man, in you know, in, in the manufacturing industry that way over many years. So they're familiar with with manufacturing, and and when they get on a team, it's either myself or Patty that lead the team. Uh, you know, they're they're guided in how uh, if if they if they need the guidance, you know, they're they're guided in how you know what what does this mean for a manufacturer to to be operating in this particular way or, or not having these processes and systems in place. And so, yes, yeah, so, so those people are come, they come from, from all around the manufacturing industry. And, and there are, I forgot, in that manufacturing community, there are also manufacturers. All the previous uh, finalists uh, in, in previous years are invited to be represented on the team. And so we have manufacturers there as well. So, and then when the team goes to visit, you know, or evaluate a company, it's a mixed team. It could be anywhere from three to, to eight people or nine people. I think we had a nine person team this year and, and there, it's a mix of everyone. It's either myself or Patty leading and then a mix of, of uh, the rest of those types of examiners. That's the first part. So the second part of your question is how can anybody else get in there? Well, it's, it's by invitation. And I set out the invitations. If anybody's interested, you know, let me know. And, and we'll evaluate whether or not that we could, we'll, we'll bring you on the team, but, but you let me know. And uh, I, I wouldn't be able to take everybody, for instance, <laughs> that's a pretty large group. But I mean, if you're interested, let me know that you are and, and we'll consider, uh, you know, uh, uh, the evaluation team. The, 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 uh, the 2021 cycle, I think I just mentioned, begins in November. Uh, we're opening up nominations. Somebody had a question. I saw a question about how do you nominate or who's qualified to nominate. Anyone is qualified to nominate. If you know of a manufacturer that uh, that you feel is deserving and and you know could be should be recognized, feel free to make that nomination. I will. Um, um, I will. What I'll do is we'll have uh, something. Maybe we can put something on LinkedIn when the nominations open, and and it'll have a you know there'll be a link there to the nomination uh, information and the process and all that. So so you'll be just keep an eye out for that. Any manufacturer, you know, usually what I what I ask. What I say is, you know, if you're a, if you've got a manufacturer who's a supplier or a customer or a partner or anything that you feel is deserving of, uh, of being recognized and can benefit from going through an evaluation and getting feedback, feel free to nominate. Great. Thanks. Does that answer both of your questions, Steve? Great. Anyone else? Um, I have a question. Does your uh, yes. criteria change on a yearly basis? Very slightly. Um, it, uh, and that's because we, we revise it to keep up. You know, even the Baldrige, the Baldrige changes every two years, major changes every two years. 
in, in the off years, it's, uh, it's more minor. Sterling follows that pattern, the Sterling criteria, the full set of criteria. And ours, every year we modify it a little bit to make it a little bit more, um, well, for a couple of reasons. We want to make it a little more understandable for the, for the manufacturers. Um, I'll tell you, I, some of the questions, they're, you know, when they give us an answer, they're answering a different question. They just don't understand what the question needs. Um, but uh, yes, so to answer that's a long way to answer to say yes to your question. Go ahead. I heard someone else. Yes, I was I was going to ask. Um, I recognize one of the companies, Omnicell. Um, how do uh -huh. you how do you pick your examiners? So you know that's more healthcare related, or they do a lot of products that are healthcare related. Do you utilize examiners that have some? Um, kind of knowledge about the company or that work in the same industry, or is it just a random process that the examiners you choose? Uh, it's not exactly random, but uh, it's more random than, than we don't, you know, we don't specifically want to have you know, a, a team of healthcare people going to a healthcare company because we want to be able to have multiple perspectives. And if everybody's from the same background, those perspectives are not going to be different or they, they'll be too similar. Let's put it that way. And so, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that, uh, that when I orient the examiners each year, we talk about is, you know, we are, we're after systems and processes in our process. And that, that applies to all the whole Sterling Baldrige thing as well. We're looking for systems and processes. Uh, you know, we're not going in to evaluate how they actually make, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a computer mouse. Um, it doesn't matter uh, what they're making. It's the process of how they manage what they make. That's really where the, the evaluation comes. It's looking at the systems, the management systems, the leadership systems that, you know, in the way that they manage the, their, the processes for ma actually making their product, how they manage their processes for engaging employees, how they manage their processes for developing strategies and so on. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Omnicell was very interesting, by the way. You know, um, they're all interesting when you look at everything that's being made in Florida and all these things. You never think about it. Um, you know, it's a the, the manufacturing sector in Florida before COVID was about five point two percent of the state's GDP. Now, to put that in perspective, the average across the United States is about twelve percent of state GDP is where manufacturing stands. Some states are much higher, you know, uh, um, Illinois, um, Wisconsin, um, Ohio, they were like in the 17, 18% of GDP mm. of the state. And so, so and, and I think really because Florida sounds small, 5.2% because tourism is so large. I'll bet right now in the middle of the COVID pandemic, it's a lot different picture. Uh, because tourism is zeroed out, you know, almost zeroed out. Uh, it's gone, it's gone pretty low. But uh, but in in a normal time, 5.2 percent, and and uh, uh, and actually the the number of of employees within manufacturing is uh, is is also low. And that's because there's a there, there's very high productivity in manufacturing for those for the employees that they have. You know, 300 and 40 some odd thousand employees in manufacturing in Florida, you know, when you look at tourism, uh, I, and I keep coming back to tourism because that's the most obvious example to me, you know, it's a million and a half people in tourism. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so you can see where, you know, where the differences are. Anything else I can answer? Any other questions? Yeah, if we want to nominate, if we want to nominate a company, do we just go out to the madeinflorida.org site and do that? No, or? no, I will. Uh, we don't have the uh, the nominations are not open yet. They'll open up around November first, so in a few weeks. Um, but what what I'll do is is we'll put into the uh, the ASQ uh, LinkedIn uh, group. We'll 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 publish the 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 uh, the link there where you can go to to make your nomination. Well, I appreciate your uh, your uh, attention this evening. It, it's, as you can see, as I said earlier, this was a little different than a normal type of presentation, but I thought that with Manufacturing Month here now, it's it's just good knowledge uh, to understand what manufacturing is in Florida, how important it really is to to Florida, and uh, uh, and important to to all of us, you know, to our standard of living, 
everything that we use is, is manufactured somewhere. And, uh, uh, you know, people usually think of manufacturing as they usually say the 3D, you know, dirty, dark, and dingy. And, um, and then there, are, there are a few manufacturers like that, but, but there's so many high tech. You, you could see that none of those companies we looked at, even the larger, you know, more industrial, like Eastman Chemical or Cerex, um, you know, large, large facilities making big things, you know, big rolls of, of filter fabric and, and, and so on. And, uh, and, you know, they're not dirty, dark, and dingy. And then all the support for everything that happens is not dirty, dark, and dingy. Is engineering. There's R and D. There's uh, you know everything that goes behind goes on behind the scenes to to support the manufacturing the production processes. So it's, it's wide open and and actually something I didn't mention is that uh, you know average salaries in manufacturing are higher than than in other sectors in Florida. Um, I think they're you got to take this with a grain of salt because they're looking at at the entire range of salaries, but they say the average salary in uh, in Florida for manufacturing is about 60,000, around $60,000 annually. Um, in Brevard County, that's the Space Coast, uh, the average manufacturing salary there is about $90,000. Now, again, like I say, take that with a grain of salt because not everybody's making $90,000 in Brevard County. There are entry level positions, uh, you know, people are coming up. There are a lot of engineering and, and very high level positions that that balance that out, that, that cause it to get to 90, but but uh, if you just look at the relative, uh, you know, difference, you know, uh, uh, again, I'll look at tourism, the average tourism salary, uh, you know, or wage is, is down in the, in the $40,000 range. So, you know, just look at the relative differences there and, and that'll give you, uh, give you some ideas.